Twins Touch. Hi, Twigs. Hi. A sacred geometry. Mary Magdalene was a bit of a pain in the ass to make. I know where you start, where you end, how to please, how to curse. I think it's like the most complex song I've ever made. She's the perfect person who could out me for not doing anything because she does everything. She's like tap dancing on a pole, swinging swords. It's crazy. What was it like the first day you guys actually sat down to work? She's unlike any other artist you work with. She'll like bring in little like potions and like, and like, like readings. And she was like, do you know about Mary Magdalene? The original story is that she was a prostitute and she was filled with sin. But then it came out that she had a really amazing and extensive knowledge on oils and she was a healer and she was in many ways what we call a doctor now. I think that that duality really excited me. That is my archetype. She was talking about using the story about Mary Magdalene for her music. She was very determined to go down this path. I just had some surgery. I had fibroids in my uterus. I was in a period of like deep healing and rediscovering my sexuality. Mary Magdalene helped me ground myself in who I am. Before like I knew it, we were like drinking the Kool-Aid. I was believing whatever she said. And I think she just like started singing with like no beat or anything. A woman's work. A woman's prerogative. Kashmir, I think he laid like a harmonizer, like behind it. She wanted it to sound like very gothic, but also like very futuristic at the same time. I just thought of this melody. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, that's crazy. Like Mary Magdalene actually fits into that. Mary Magdalene, creature of desire, come just a closer to me with her like a lot of the things we use are like little clicks in her voice <laughs> harmonies <laughs> drawn out notes that are like tuned down <laughs> she'll be like it should be like wah, wah, brr, bah, bah. you know she'll like do shit, and you'll just be like oh. and you're like just like trying to program it quick enough <laughs> I just remember like really loving the song, being at Benny's house, realizing in that session that the name of my album was Magdalene. And then I was working in this other house in LA that was haunted and quite stressful actually. We just spent like two weeks ripping the song apart and rebuilding it and it not really working and then ripping it apart again, rebuilding it again and again. I think I broke a lot of songs in that haunted house. There's so many versions, man. Do you have any of those early versions you could show us? Yes, I heard. Where, like, Benny's version was very clear and very focused, um, we really cluttered it. Was she frustrated throughout this process, or was she exhilarated by it? Oh, no, she's just excited. She's like a kid. I want to try that. Can we do that? Can we do this? I love practicing stuff. How many different ways can you do a cartwheel? You know, like, can you do a slow one? Can you do it on your elbows? Can you do it fast? Can you do it with no hands? We sat down once and she was like, I want, like, the sound of witches burning at a pyre. And I was like, right, okay. Do you think because it was the title track and the centerpiece of the album, you were overthinking it? I wasn't overthinking it. I just don't think I was treating it with enough sensitivity in the beginning. Did that end up on the record anywhere? No. But then there was another stage with Nico. So what did Nico do to fix this song? A lot. <laughs> he did a lot. Is it a strange thing, like you're coming into someone else's house and rearranging the furniture? It is strange, but you know, I come from dance music and I did so many remixes and it's just the same thing. We were in Electric Lady. It was like three o'clock in the morning and we went down into the big studio and it was where like Prince had recorded all this stuff and it had like a purple board. So it felt really special. There's just definitely some spirits in there. 
speaking through. With Mary Magdalene, every other session has always been like a full day session. I was like, okay, no, mute that. Okay, no, take it out. Okay, put that in. Okay, let's try guitar. You know, all this stuff. Whereas the end of Mary Magdalene was the opposite. Mm. It was complete calm. And there was just this magic kind of like 30 minutes to an hour when Nico just like his energy like just grew in the space. I remember like re kind of doing the chords and I started feeling a bit more of like that w that there was a direction or something. As soon as it had like the, a darker feeling, that's when it actually came to life. He just went on his computer and he just made all these incredible like stretchy sounds. I had coffee when I and I don't drink caffeine, so maybe I was a little crazy. I just had this idea that I wanted it to bounce. It's just like the wrath of Mary. He found like a hardness in air and that felt truly like evoking her spirit. Do you dance? Do you jump around like when something finally hits? You no, know, I don't think I did on that because I didn't want to like, you know, when something's happening in front of you and you're just like, does nobody move? Everyone stay really still. You know, no one change anything. No one even put the air con on. Everything has to stay exactly the same. It was kind of one of those moments. Can we kill the cat? Nope. For a little while, please. I just don't know if there's a way for me to do this and be comfortable without the cat. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little shy. You look so good, though. <laughs> <laughs>